I didn't think when we started a football podcast that we'd have to become running back fucking defenders here. But apparently <laughs> that's that's what the football gods are pushing us to be. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. We spent about four hours, give or take, you know, four hours there. Uh, <laughs> pulling, pulling the numbers from some running backs. Um, and we've come up with a new determination for what we think, our opinion is, of an elite running back. Uh, do you want to go over some of these numbers or, and, and kind of like see if any of them startle you, surprise you, or, or what you think of them? Yeah, why don't, why don't you go over them because I think you have it down. <laughs> okay. So for those watching the video at this time, time market at 255. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Go get a pen. Go get a pencil. Write down some of the numbers. We're going to get a calculator. We're in class uh, here. No. <laughs> Do some weird like time, time lapse. <laughs> you just chug a whole drink. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't got it right now, then you're not going to get it. All right. So from 2009 to 2015, we found – sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. We found the new number that we like to use for running backs is 1,200 yards per season. 1,000 is too easy for re- running backs to get. I mean, if you average, five, again, five yards a carry, 20 carries a game, that's 100 yards a game, you're going to reach that by week 10. Even if you do four and you get 20 yards a game, that's 80, 80 yards a game. You're still going to reach that by, what, week 12? I mean, yeah. you're, you're more than likely going to get that. So 1,200, we've noticed, is a much better benchmark because going back throughout the NFL's history from since 2009, uh, we've seen been able to use that number as a distinctive drop-off from NFL talent. So we're going to look at this so from 2009 to 2015, seven seasons. There's an average of seven running backs that got 1,200 yards a season. With the most being in 2010 and 2012, they both had 10 guys that reached 1,200 yards. From 2016 to 2022, last year, again, another seven seasons, that average has now dropped to just four guys a year get 1,200 yards. So the NFL talent at running back has definitely declined there. Again, the peak of that was in 2016 at seven. And even in 2019, we had to factor in a quarterback, Lamar Jackson, who rushed for over 1,200 yards. I believe that was his MVP year. Yep. So it just kind of goes to show that when you look at the number of like a a more accurate number of like 1,200, the NFL talent has dropped off over the years. The average is, is weight and there's just not as many guys getting to that kind of number. Now you and you may say, well, what about the quality of guys, right? Like, what about the you know running back by committee is just it's much easier, you know? Because the first argument was it's easy to find new running backs. This next one is going to be addressing the running back by committee. Uh, we found, just looking at last uh, two years ago, Dalvin Cook versus Jonathan Taylor, and this might actually even help explain why some of these guys have fallen off and are getting released. For so for Jonathan Taylor, he had I believe it was over eighteen hundred yards. For every 18 carries he got, he got a touchdown. For every 24 carries he got, he got a 20-plus yard run. So that's an explosive crazy. play. crazy, yeah. For, so for those that aren't aware, in 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 the in, in, a, in football, we have a thing called explosive plays. I'm sure you've heard a broadcaster say it. I'm sure you've heard an announcer say it, whatever it is. For, for a statistic behind it, as an offense, we regard an explosive play as anything that's more than a 15-yard run or a 20-yard pass. Those are explosive plays. Every 24th carry for Jonathan Taylor was a explosive play for a pass play even. And this is just run. He can get 20, you get 24 yard carries a game. So he's having at least one explosive play every game. And that doesn't even factor in what he brings pass-wise. Running back screens, you know, Texas route, you know, running back a wheel up the side, any of that stuff. Right. This is strictly just their rushing numbers. And 32.2% of it, all of his carries got, a, you know, achieved a first down resulting in a first down. So that's high end efficiency. You're getting a great touchdown rate. You're getting a great explosive rate and you're getting a great first down rate, new set of downs, fresh downs. That's what we're looking for, right? Those seem like better monikers for evaluating a running back. Again, for comparison in 2021, Dalvin cook, who's widely regarded as, wow, he's a great running back. He's a free agent. Shouldn't he be signed already? Kind of like we just discussed. Miami should swoop him up in 2021, which is a good year for him. I think he had 1500 yards that year. I believe was what we saw. Yeah, I think so. He had every 40-second carry he had resulted in a touchdown. So it took 42 carries to get a touchdown, over twice as many as Jonathan Taylor. He had every 28th carry resulted in a 20-yard explosive play. 
Again, that's slightly worse than Jonathan Taylor, but still pretty good. Shows he's still got some explosion. But only 22%, 22.9% of his runs resulted in a first down. A 10-point dip from Jonathan Taylor. Wild. So, again, you, if you just look at the face value number of, like, oh, rushing yards, you'd think these are two equally really good running backs. When you actually look at the efficiency of it, it's not. I mean, you have one guy that's clearly in a different tier than the other. It explains a little bit maybe why there's been a decline for Dalvin Cook. You're not getting the yards. You already weren't getting touchdowns. You already weren't getting his first downs. I mean, you can give anyone anyone 300 carries and they'll get you a, a good chunk of change. But what are you really doing with those carries? And to further exasperate this point, to use some you know five dollar word there, uh, <laughs> a guy that's usually regarded as a running back by committee running back, uh, David Montgomery, and a guy a rookie quarter, uh, running back that we thought undrafted. Look at that new star. See, you can get a great running back from anywhere in twenty twenty. Both their seasons, I believe. Actually, you mentioned James Robinson. Made, James Robinson uh, was the un, un, undrafted guy who made the uh, Pro Bowl. Thank you. Yep. Uh, they both actually had. 100 or 1,070 yards rushing, both of them, on 240 carries for Robinson and 247 carries for David Montgomery. Again, you're thinking, wow, see, they're great running backs. They got 1,000 yards. You can find that anywhere. Well, by our new moniker of 1,200 yards rushing, they aren't great running backs. They're actually slightly below average of what we'd expect from a great running back. But again, when you dive into the numbers again of efficiency, every 34th carry from Robinson results in a touchdown. So he's not even getting you a touchdown a game. It, you have to give him a huge load. That's what Pause. she said. Just to, <laughs> <laughs> can I give this to <laughs> Damn, I feel myself we weren't going to do this. <laughs> you have to give, <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> I love it. Like an OnlyFans, you got to give him a huge load. Keep, keep, we're we're, we're going to keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> But you had to give him a bulk amount of carries, a giant bulk amount of carries, for him to even get you a touchdown. He For every 48th carry, he got you a 20-plus yard game. It took 48 carries to get a 20-plus yard game. That's that's almost three games. I mean, you're average. That's a wild thing about. Again, Jonathan Taylor, 24 carries gets you an explosive play. Uh, James Robinson, who made the Pro Bowl that year, and 48 with a 22.5% of all of his carries results in a first down. Again, still a 10-point dip from Jonathan Taylor. For David Montgomery, it was every 31 carries got resulted in a touchdown. Every 50 carries resulted in an explosive play. 50 carries. Yeah, I'm not I'm not surprised about that. And only 24% of his carries went for a first down. So you can't even say, well, he's a power nose. Bulk. Only, only a quarter of his carries result in a first down versus over almost a third of Jonathan Taylor's. Yeah. So, I mean, again, when you really look at the numbers of the efficiency, like not just giving a guy a you know, bulk of carries, what are you doing with that bulk? Um, what are you doing with that bulge? Uh, <laughs> it was there. It was, there. Um, <laughs> it was a, a gimme. <laughs> what a fun night date. It was too easy. Um, but also, you know, like, <laughs> I was, I was, I'm like Googling something too. So I'm like, I'm like listening to you talk about you know, bulge wait, and I'm like listen, Googling I'm something like, for our like talk. Here. Does that, does that fit in the hashtags on Twitter? Can we, Hey guys, just to let you know, this has never become a sex podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was actually Googling too. Cause I have been corrected by my, by, by my own self. James Robinson got snubbed from the Pro Bowl. He didn't, he didn't oh. make it, but he kind of arose to the, the scene back in 2020. Okay, so he rose to the scene in 2020. He was a big deal in 2020. Yep. Uh, he, you know, he's been further used as an example of look, you can find running backs anywhere. You don't need to draft him high. And now he's not on like a team. It's crazy. And, yeah. And as I'm on a team, I'm saying when you look at and you look at the, you know, the numbers of the efficiency as well as maybe through a new moniker of 1,200 yards, it's easy to see that the quality of NFL running backs isn't what it used to be, and that the ones that do get you 1,200 yards a year are more valuable, but also. It's what do they do with those yards and those carries that makes it even more important. So a guy like Jonathan Taylor should get paid. I mean, we can even quickly pull up Saquon Barkley's numbers real fast. I'm curious. I think he's going to fit probably more into that Jonathan Taylor moniker. Yeah, and while you searched that up too, I had had a quick, quick point. Um, Maybe that kind of sheds light on why Cook isn't signed right now. Maybe that sheds light why the Vikings didn't extend him and why teams aren't really biting at the bit. 
to to sign them because what if they they look at these numbers which i'm guessing they do they're front office people um they yeah. live and breathe football they know probably a lot more than we do uh, they probably even look at more metrics to to uh look at and kind of base their their choices on who who they should bring in and whatnot um and also to your to your point like we got the 1200 numbers looking off this average you know yearly russian totals right mm-hmm. but when you when you break it down with the increase of like our the nfl schedule now there's 17 games it still comes out to be 71 yards a game roughly to get to the 1200 number which still is not like a lot <laughs> No. You know, like, and then that's why we also moved it from the one one thousand, right? Because I think one thousand only was like fifty eight yards a game. Yeah, I think I given think the more. given the seventeen game schedule. So, um, I mean, in in reality, you probably see the top back get at least sixteen to eighteen hundred yards rushing. I think Josh Jacobs hit that sixteen hundred yards last season, if yeah. I if I remember correctly. Um, so like twelve thousand is still like our our benchmark, but it's still or twelve thousand twelve twelve hundred is still our our benchmark, but it's still not like super high. Yeah, it's not like you know irrationally high. Yeah, we're not saying you hit fifteen hundred yards to be elite, which given probably elite running backs do, given the amount if they have enough touches and they're like every down back. But mm-hmm. I'm I'm intrigued to see if that number further, you know, reduces the next five seasons given that teams now are moving away from the single back system and having two or three guys who they kind of give uh carries to. Yeah. I said so getting back to some numbers here real quick. So for, I actually was able to get two real quick. So Saquon had 1,300 yards, which qualifies him for what we'd then deem as a good running back or, you know, maybe to the elite running back. But it took him th- – so for every 30 carries, he got you a touchdown. For every 33 carries, he got you an explosive play, and 21% of his first of his carries results in a first down. So this is also him really coming off an injury and starting to feel like himself for the yeah. first time. So, again, obviously you want to see that, that efficiency on the first down go up because we're, we're at the low level there. But 30, 30, touch, you know, 30 carries per touchdown is a little bit closer to Jonathan Taylor than it is Dalvin Cook. And the 33 for the explosives is actually a little bit worse than, than Dalvin Cook. So, again, but we kind of know he's coming off an injury there. Yeah. Another one that kind of interested me was Josh Jacobs, who had a 27.4% first down carry percentage. So he's a great get a first down back. It took, uh, I believe it was 28 carries to get him a touchdown. That's pretty so solid. that's about, again, about a touchdown a game if you get giving him 30 carries. And it took 49 carries to get him an explosive play. Hmm. So that's a little interesting there, too, in terms of maybe he's not an explosive kind of guy, but he's so efficient at getting you first downs, it makes it worth it to give you those extra carries. Yeah, maybe he's just convert- to have that breakaway speed. Yeah, he just doesn't have that breakaway speed, but he's converting at a 27% rate. So that tells us he's got great vision. So, again, I think it kind of just further goes into our point of that there's a more efficient way to measure what a guy is, what what makes them good, what makes them special versus just, well, he can catch the ball out of a backfield and he ran for 1,000 yards. Right. Now, like I said, I think, and I think that kind of – maybe we'll just drop it there for today, but I really do think that the, the way we evaluate running backs needs to be re-looked at as fans because I'm sure some of these NFL teams are using these numbers already. And we think I think we need to start really like consider and contextualizing, contextualizing what running backs bring to a team. 